Hello and welcome to this next clip preaching video. Thanks for joining me. My name's Andy. We're going to look at the gospel passage for the Sunday to come ahead of time um, to try and unpick it beforehand. So this week we're continuing in John in this series of passages through Lent and it's John 12, 20 to 33. Okay, now there is a lot going on in this passage. So I'm going to focus particularly on a couple of bits, but let's give a quick overview first. Um, so it starts off with um, this, this fact that some Greek people, so some people who weren't Jewish, wanted to see Jesus and they kind of arrange it through Philip, perhaps they had a kind of connection with him somehow. And so Philip and Andrew go to Jesus and say that there are these, these Greek people, these non-Jewish people who would like to talk to you, they want to see you. And Jesus says, the hour has come. Now, so far in John's Gospel, he's been saying the hour has not yet come. It wasn't his time to be killed and to be raised. But this is the thing that triggers the hour coming for the Son of Man to be glorified. This is the thing that triggers the, the crucifixion and the, the resurrection. Now, that raises a whole lot of questions. What was so significant about these Greek people coming to see Jesus, why was that the thing that makes the whole gospel pivot onto a different path? There's a question. Maybe it's something about the, I don't know, there, there being like a, a crack in the tank and suddenly it's all the water's pouring out. The, the, the gospel is no longer being contained to one people, it's going universal. Perhaps there's something like that. Then the next, few verses are almost like uh, um, a montage of bits from the other Gospels. John, John's Gospel was put together um, last of all, we think, and he, he kind of repurposes bits from the other Gospels, which he certainly had copies of. So he, he is almost like a best of um, bits that didn't otherwise make it into the Gospel, perhaps. These are bits here. So he talks about a grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying. Um, very much in the what you get in the other Gospels. Then the bit about people who uh, you need to lose your life to find it, you need to lose your psyche to find your Zoe, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, then he said, now my soul is troubled. Um, this was like the Gethsemane part. Um, th there's no Gethsemane story in John's Gospel apart from this bit. This is like John's Gethsemane. And then there was a voice from heaven an audible voice from heaven which people around interpreted as thunder or an angel speaking. Again, in the synoptic gospels that Matthew, Mark, Luke, you get a voice from heaven at Jesus' baptism and the transfiguration, but you don't get that in John. So this is perhaps that sort of, that sort of tradition coming through. So all those things are almost like a, as I say, like a, a montage of bits which are too good to, to miss out completely but didn't really fit in elsewhere. That's how I see that. But then in verse 31, he gets back onto the point about the Son of Man being glorified. And he said, this is the judgment of the world. Here, Jesus explains, and John uses Jesus' words to explain why, you know, what the judgment of the world will look like. We talked about that a little bit last week about how God came into the world to, to save it. So this is the judgment of the world. The ruler of the world will be driven out. And what he means by the ruler of the world quite clearly is Satan. It's an evil spiritual force which has somehow taken the world hostage. Um, there's been a, a false usurper taken over the world and this is what the crucifixion does. It drives out this fake ruler of the world. I, I've just done another video, um, which you can find on the same place that you found this, um, which explores different reasons for different understandings of why, of why Jesus died on the cross. So this is very much in that sort of, in comparison with that, this is very much the idea of Christ's victory over evil. That's what the cross was in certainly in this in this passage here. The the purpose of the cross was to defeat 
the evil one, to defeat the fake ruler of the world, drive him out. And he goes on, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, which in John you get lots of things which mean two things at once. So it means partly the crucifixion and partly the ascension, the rising to heaven, the, the resurrection. So when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. How good is that? Once the block is out of the way, once the ruler of the world has gone, once the, the God who has blinded the eyes of unbelievers has been dealt with, then everybody will get drawn to Jesus. Because it'll be obvious. <laughs> I think there's a real hope here. And this, going back to the start of this passage, this is why it was so significant that the Greek people wanted to come to Jesus, because it was the first kind of glimpse that people from around the world were starting to see, the first breaking of the power of evil, keeping things separate. Okay, so some questions to, to try and unpick this. Um, so in the understanding here, there is a ruler of the world, Satan, um, the devil, who um, is in control of the world in some shape or form. And what does that look like? What does that, what, if that's true, what does that mean the world is like? What, what are the effects of that? Secondly, what do you think is the importance of the Greek people wanting to see Jesus? Um, why is that so important to, to John and his, the way he put the gospel together? And finally, um, when the, the ruler of the world has been driven out, when the ruler of the world has been judged and found guilty and dealt with, what happens next? What do, you, what do you see happening once Satan has lost? And finally, how is this good news today? In a way, this is all good news in its purest form, but how is this particularly good news for us today? How does this help us to live better? Okay, well, thank you so much for, for being with me. I'd love to hear what you think. See you next time. Bye-bye.